This was the first cemetery to be added as a California landmark. Under our feet lay hundreds of pioneers from the Old West. Welcome to the Something or Other Tour. Welcome to the Something or Other Tour. We're at the historic Union Cemetery in Redwood City, California, my hometown. The Union Cemetery was established in 1859. Back in the pioneer days after the gold rush, there was no established cemeteries here on the peninsula. And the local landowner named Horace Hawes, who owned a ton of land around here, started putting some plots onto his land, and he didn't like that. So he wanted to establish a real cemetery, so he stopped burying people on his land. There was already over a dozen people buried on his land, close to what is now Sequoia High School. They picked this plot of land right off modern day Woodside Road, which back then was a trail to the mountains. They purchased the land, and they established the cemetery. Horace Hawes left his mark on this area. There's still a school and a street named after him. Bunch of cool information up here. The Historic Union Cemetery Association does a very good job preserving and showing off the history. There's even a cool little guide. Has some of the notable tenants. The first to be exhumed from the Hawes land and brought here was four-year-old Anna Augusta Douglas. And unfortunately, 10 years later, she was met by Nathan Douglas, her younger brother who also died at four years old. So dear young Anna was moved and buried here in 1859. Some people weren't very happy with Mr. Hawes. They felt it was disrespectful to exhume those bodies that were on his land already. But it's probably a good thing they set up an official cemetery. By 1876, the cemetery was notable for its very large, beautiful monuments, which were manufactured by Muldoon, Walton, and Cobb of San Francisco. Booze. Different organizations started buying up plots of land here to bury their members, including the International Order of Odd Fellows. They have a corner back here dedicated just to them. You may remember that we mentioned the Odd Fellows in our Bodhi episode. This impressive monument here is to John H. Titus. He passed away in 1891. So apparently Judge Buck here originally had a house erected, like a small house, that's since been demolished or fell over or destroyed. Wouldn't it be strange to have an apartment right there and David Jenkins is just laying at rest right here outside your window in your carport? I know you guys have been waiting all day for it. Here's the plump plot. Even with the loud road next to this, it's still a very creepy place. Santa kidnapping suspect? Santa something kidnapper suspect. That one's definitely suspect. We're on to you, Santa. <laughs> this is my buddy these, Jeff. These dead people. <laughs> Mr. Herman here made it almost 100 years in the 1800s. That's pretty impressive. Oh, shoot. We have the same birthday. October 7th. What's up, Herman? Born October 7th, 1822, died January 20th, 1905. I hope I have a run like he had. Interesting that some of these plots still have flowers being left. I wonder if it's actual family or if it's just the association because there's quite a few plots with somewhat fresh flowers. And there's one right here, one over there, one over there. This one's in the shape of a log. I wonder if he was a lumberman. There's a lot of lumber industry up in the hills here. Wallace family lays here. Joseph S. Wallace was a California state senator, and Sarah Wallace was the first president of the California Suffrage Association. So she fought long and hard to get women the right to vote. 
Remember, if you like this sort of thing, we do a lot of history videos, exploring videos, museums, stadiums, all kinds of cool stuff. So make sure you're subscribed. And we have playlists for Wild West places, abandoned places, all that. They officially stopped accepting new bodies in 1918. The exception being if your family already owned a plot, you could still be buried here. And then they also used the cemetery for pauper's graves for a couple decades through the Great Depression. Pauper's graves were cheap, unmarked graves for poor people, so basically unmarked and uncared for plots. The cemetery sat in disrepair for decades, but in 1967 it was designated a California landmark. And then in 1983, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places. And still, after that, it continued to fall into disrepair until 1992, when the Historic Union Cemetery Association was formed, and they started cleaning it up and restoring a lot of the headstones and the plots. This section of the cemetery is the reason for its name. This east corner is designated for the Grand Army of the Republic. The Grand Army of the Republic, or the GAR, was an organization for Civil War veterans from the Union military services. After the good guys beat the traitors and slave owners, many of them became pioneers and headed west to try to find new opportunities. Remember, the gold rush was still very much active. Townships and settlements across the west were still growing with promise. Many of them settled here on the peninsula south of San Francisco and Redwood City and the surrounding areas. So it was nice for them to have an organization and a community. And then the organization bought a plot here so that they had a beautiful place to be buried. The Grand Army of the Republic promoted veteran affairs and memorials, and that included throwing Memorial Day celebrations in this cemetery dating back to the 1880s, I believe. That's before it was even a federal holiday. All of the graves in this section are Civil War veterans, except for this one. This is the grave of James Peace. While he wasn't a soldier, he was the first man to raise an American flag in San Mateo County. So they gave him the honor of being buried amongst them. To the memory of California's patriotic dead, who served during the War for the Union, mustered out. Mustered out was another term for being discharged. Your job was done. It was the sacrifice of these fellas and fellas like them that kept our country together so that we could keep building and improving upon the American dream for everybody. Over 150 years later, we still have work to do, but I'm grateful that we have the chance. And if you haven't yet, you should go check out our Colonel Allensworth State Park episode. He was another Union Army member who started the first black settlement in California. The section right across from the GAR section is for the Freemasons, the Masonic Order. This is the grave of George Washington Tallman, a sheriff's deputy who was killed in the line of duty at 71 years old. He came out west from New York in 1849 for the gold rush, figured he'd try his hand at striking it rich. He was in Nevada County for a while where he was first elected to Justice of the Peace. We just did a recent video there at an abandoned mental hospital, might want to check that out. Then he went to Virginia City for a while, one of my favorite places on earth, videos coming soon. He bounced around for a while and became somewhat wealthy. But as the gold mining industry declined, so did his wealth. At 71 years old, he was working at the San Mateo County Jail when four men tried to escape. Don't forget, this was the Wild West. They smashed open a very heavy jail cell door and crushed George's arm. His arm was broken in two places and caused a very nasty infection. He fought for days, but he finally succumbed to his injuries. And he passed away February 17th, 1888. And he was a tough son of a gun. Apparently, he wouldn't give any last words because he said, I'm not dying. I'll be fine. It's just a flesh wound. This set almost doesn't seem real. Looks like something you buy at a Halloween store. Those ones are creepy. The baby plots are definitely the creepiest and the saddest. And there's a lot of them. Baby Martinez. Martinez and Morales.
What I like about the cemetery is while it's still restored, it wasn't overdone and made to look new. It still looks like a pioneer cemetery. They did not ruin the aesthetic. The above ground graves are definitely seem like a relic of the past, especially with all the moss on it. Luckily it's sealed pretty tight because this is where the zombies will come out. <laughs> This is the grave of Lester P. Cooley. He owned huge acres of land in Ravenswood, which is modern day East Palo Alto and some of Menlo Park. In total, he owned about 400 acres of land and he became the first elected mayor of the newly formed Menlo Park. Lester P. Cooley was very important to the area. There's still a lot of places named after him. There's a street named Cooley in East Palo Alto. Cooley's Landing out in the marshlands. One of the most notable graves here is that of the Honorable Benjamin F. Fox. He died here in 1869 at the age of 64 years old. Originally from the Buffalo, New York area, he became a judge in Michigan for a while before eventually coming here to San Mateo County. Judge Fox became well known. One day he was in the magistrate's court in Michigan and a poor widow was being charged with crimes but she had no money to pay for counsel. So Benjamin stepped up and said that he would defend her. Apparently it was a brilliant court case. He got the widow acquitted. So every once in a while he would jump back in. He would represent people, usually poor and oppressed people, but he never wanted to officially be a lawyer. When the Honorable Fox headed west, apparently it was a harrowing journey. A lot of people died along the way, somewhat like the Donner Party, but he made it to San Mateo County. He was a San Mateo County judge for about four years, and then he died in 1869. But I always appreciate people that will do some good. When this cemetery was established, Woodside Road over here was basically just a trail up into the mountains. But it started becoming a main arterial road as the area grew bigger and bigger. Originally it was two lanes, now it's four lanes. The urban legend is that a lot of the poppers plots were actually on the edge here. So when they expanded Woodside Road, they paved over some of those plots. I'm not 100% on that, but I believe that to be true. So maybe Woodside Road here is haunted. <laughs> that one's just named Baby, it didn't even have a name yet. Yeah, and then 87 to 87, January to October. 87 to 87, January to October. This is all young children here. Then 82 to 88. Blanche, Mabel, Sarah, Maud, Chaz, Robert E., William H., Alice, Catherine. Well, William H. is almost 70. Those are some great pioneer names though. Does this remind anyone else of the cemetery from the old Disney cartoon with the dancing skeletons? The Silly Symphonies cartoon? Andrew Teague lays at rest here. He was a prominent lumber businessman in Woodside nearby. He became a supervisor of San Francisco County. Eventually he was a chairman of the newly built Woodside Library. And then eventually a district attorney for the newly formed San Mateo County. That's it for the historic Union Cemetery here in Redwood City, California. So much cool Wild West history, pioneer history, California history, American history. If you'd like to support us further on these adventures, we do have a Patreon with some exclusive content on there. And remember the playlist. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this little history tour of a very creepy and historic cemetery. Real Wild West Pioneer Cemetery. I mean, are we talking ghouls? We talking ghosts and ghoulies here? Like, subscribe, share, do all the cool things that cool kids do her life something or other to her. Jeff pointed out an interesting plot here. Irrigation. I wonder if irrigation was in the Grand Army of the Republic. I'm so happy my niecey niece came to visit. Arrgh. He can't remember his lines anymore. I can't, you're right. What are you, what are you trying to make a fool of me? 